right, so you're busy packing for an amazing adventure. You're going to look for snow leopards in the mighty Himalayas. What camera gear do you take? This is an important decision and one I hope to help you with in this part two of my getting ready for the Himalayas. Part one covered all of the clothes that I tend to take, the gear that I pack, and part two will focus on the camera gear that I typically take with to the Himalayas. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, let's talk about the camera bodies. What do I take? How many do I take? Why do I take it? Now, I'm fortunate to be a Sony Alpha ambassador, so uh, I have access to some great gear, but for the last two or three years, I've been using pretty much exclusively the Sony Alpha One. Now, I take with two Alpha One bodies. Uh, I won't mind a third just in case, but you have to remember, if you don't take a second body, most people I know now do, but if something were to happen to one camera, you could drop it, fall into the water, it could malfunction, anything could happen. It is a Sony, so it's unlikely, but it does happen, right? Um, you have to be prepared for that, and the second quality camera works well. I see some people travel with a second body, but it's a, a, a camera of less quality or value to the first one, and if something were to happen and you find yourself in a remote area like the Himalayas, then you may have problems because you're not going to have the same performance. So I try to keep it the same. This is the A1 and it's a great camera because it has resolution. So in the Himalayas, you're going to be photographing at distances very often. Um, having an ability to crop is very important. So from a photographic point of view, the fact that you can have 50 or 60 megapixels makes a big difference as opposed to 20. You want to have that resolution and you want to be able to get closer to your subject. That's the first important thing about this camera that I love. The second is shutter speed. Now, a lot of this, the scenes you'll be photographing will probably be a little bit static. Um, if you're lucky to see a snow leopard, often they perched up, up on a rock or um, slowly on the move, but you might get a chance for action. Now, you're going there with the hopes of seeing something like a hunt, and when it happens, you want to be ready. Fortunately, the cameras of today have fast shutter speeds, and so does the A1, so you're looking for shutter speed. Another thing in this camera that I love is the dynamic range, the ability to shoot very bright highs, very bright light, and very low light. Um, dark shadows, bright highlights all together. It's got incredible dynamic range, and the photographs edit very well. That's something I love about the A1, is it's beautiful to edit on. I don't know if you ever have, but so much of it is done in camera, and it leaves you with so little work, and when you do edit, it's great because of that dynamic range. Another thing about the, the performance that I love about this camera is the autofocus. It is incredible. It has animal eye autofocus, but it's very, uh, uh, very, um, Another thing that I love about this camera is the autofocus performance. To me, it's second to none, especially tracking fast moving subjects. It has animal eye autofocus, so it can lock onto your subject. If ever I get a sequence where something is hunting, like a snow leopard running down the hill, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to get the action. It's not gonna lose focus. I love the reliability of this camera in terms of autofocus. Another important thing that I look for. Then, on the ergonomic size, it's small. Usually I'll have a battery grip attached to my camera, which makes it a bit bigger, but for this trip, because I'm packing a lot of gear, I've taken it off, so I'm gonna have a smaller unit. It's great to have that functionality, and uh, still have the same camera, just smaller, and it's easier to handle once I get on that side, and it's lighter to pack, and I have left stuff in my bag as well, which helps a lot. A wider lens. Now, I'm actually filming on the one lens, uh, it's on that camera over there, it is the 24 to 70 f 2.8. Now I take that with for landscapes, for um, any uh, panoramas, uh, for time lapses, and people. We're gonna visit some monasteries and uh, areas around Ley especially. There's gonna be a chance to photograph people. So for wide lens number one is my 24 to 70. Next up is, I mean, this is just a staple lens. You just can't, you can't go wrong with this lens. It's, this is the Sony 70 to 200 f 2.8, the newer one. They've stripped almost a half a kilo off the old version. And that makes this lens for me just a, a really, really good companion for travel. It's light in weight and it will certainly help you wherever you go. You're gonna get great stuff with this. This is an important lens for you to have um, from a landscape point of view, environments, animals, people. It's just a workhorse of a lens and one that is just about always in my bag. So important lens, 
70 to 200, it goes with me. Now, onto the big guns. What do you take as a telephoto? Now, I mean, it goes without saying you want to get close. Uh, you can take, it depends on budget. Um, if you don't own one, I suggest buying one. But you know, I can't suggest anything else than either 600 mil or if your brand of choice makes an 800 millimeter lens uh, or bigger, then go for bigger is better almost in the Himalayas. So I take Sony's 600 f4 GM lens with, and you'll see that I've actually taken the hood off. That's over here. This I'll pack in my bag, leave more space in my camera bag. This will go in my luggage bag. Um, and uh, yeah, just to make it easier to travel with. But you definitely need a lens with a ton of reach. It's very important. Uh, the snow leopards sometimes are, most of the time, are quite far away. And so top quality glass, um, this compared to a zoom telephoto lens, it's a big difference. You, you just can't compare them. The, the quality that you get out of this lens is, uh, is amazing, it's sharp, um, it helps you with clarity, uh, it helps you with uh, uh, so many aspects. So for me, the 600 mil in the Sony range is great. Um, like I said, if your brand offers something bigger, then by all means go for that, but you wanna get close. Um, and especially a lens like this coupled on a camera body like the Sony A1 is a great combination. And these lenses are also sure to not fail you. They are reliable and they just do fantastic work in the field. Coupled with this will be my two teleconverters, okay? So I take a, a 1.4 and a two times teleconverter with me, which turns my 600 mm lens into an 840 mm lens or a 1,200 millimeter lens. And once I have 1,200 millimeters on my A1 at 50 megapixels, you can see why that really helps. You have a lot of ability to crop. And on that note about reach, you know, 1,200 mils, when I shoot video on the Sony A1, I shoot at 8K because the camera is steady. We're going to talk about that now. And I'm able to then pull great video out shooting at 8K. It's very cold. So your camera doesn't tend to overheat and you get great results that way. Trust me. Um, it definitely for me is the way to go. All right. Now, spoken about camera bodies, spoken about the lenses that I, that I love taking and why. Something that I cannot stress enough, and I paid, almost paid a bit of a price, kind of did last year, is a good tripod. I took a tripod with, it's a very good tripod, but it just wasn't good enough. Simple as that, wasn't good enough. And this time I went around and I am taking a beast of a tripod with me. This is by Leo Photo, and the model is the LM364CL, and just a great tripod um, to have. It's stable, you wanna look for tripods that have if you're looking for stability, longer legs with fewer segments. All right, the more segments you have, the more stability you end up losing. So thick legs, long segments, not great for travel because it's difficult to pack. I pack it in my luggage bags. I don't have it with me. It's just too big. But you want something sturdy and steady like this. I just love how the Leo system photo works. It's very easy to pull out, to adjust, to push back in again. Everything is big on you. So when you're working with gloves, it works really great and easy, and you're able to adjust your tripod as you need. My, um, my L bracket, my, my uh, uh, head up at the top here is also by Leo Photo. Um, it's a great design. Uh, it's these, this kind of hollow cutout design. And what's great about this, uh, this plate and this uh, head is it's light and it really is strong. Big b uh, knobs to work with gloves as well, so you can loosen and, and uh, tighten. And for me, it just works really well. I love how they have their, their tightening and loosening uh, catch on here. It's really quick. You can see there, put it back on again and you tighten with one hand and you're on. So just such a clever design in terms of tripod use, works extremely well. And what I also do is I have from Leo Photo a base plate fixed to my actual lens. So this simply slides on and off. Um, I've removed my original tripod collar and just put this base plate on here. So it still works very well and I can just slide it in and out quite easily. And that's the setup. So stability, you absolutely cannot afford to have an unstable camera setup, especially there. There are other ways um, to make your camera more stable and get your tripod, you know, hang, hang a bean back down. But a lot of these things just take up more space. It makes it more difficult to carry, in my opinion. So I go with this. I have an incredible tripod. It's very stable. Um, and if there's anything else I need to do, I'll try to do it in the field there. 
You know, things like wind is a challenge and it does pick up every now and again in the region we'll be in, in the Himalayas. So uh, with a long lens, it tends to move and, and vibrate and shake a little bit. So hopefully we'll get rid of some of that once I'm up there. Um, it's also important to consider, I don't know how effective this is or how true it is, but I recently heard of a photographer that said that heat um, tends to accumulate within this uh, uh, lens hood which causes uh, less sharp images in as shooting at long range, which is interesting. So I'm going to play around with that. I might take it off, shoot without this on. Interesting. So when you're shooting in cold and your lens is a bit warmer and it causes some heat in the front, you could have less sharp images. So let's see. I'll do a bit of a review on that as well and let you know how that goes. Hello, Jack. You want to come sit down? Relay? Hello, Relay. It's not real tattoos, I promise. Those are going to wash off before they go to school. <laughs> when you go into the Himalayas, you're going to be looking for a lot of stuff all the time. So you can either rely on the team who's going to be spotting for you. Um, I and many of my guests take a system with us. This is from Swarovski. I'll share the details of this scope below. But it works very, very well. The unit is almost like binoculars. So I can look at Relay walking away there. <laughs> um, but it's comfortable. When you go a mono eyepiece versus this is more comfortable for me because I can rest both my eyes there. It's got a, a headrest as well where I can rest my forehead and it's just more comfortable for me doing it this way. Um, so that's why I do and I do take it with. It's a schlep. It's a lot of gear to take with, I promise you. Um, but once you get there, you're going to be happy because you're going to be participating and you're going to be looking for the cats. This is from Swarovski as well. This is their tripod setup. Um, also with a good steady head that I can uh, mount my, my uh, scope to. And it works very well. Again, nice big uh, knobs so I can work with gloves. And I'm going to be contributing and hopefully finding some cats for my guests. And then also from Swarovski are um, the Swarovski NR Pures that I'm also going to be taking with. And it's just for watching things close by and scanning when I'm tired of the scope. These are the 10 by 42s, so 10 by gives me enough reach um, without causing any shake. And they work extremely well, and to be honest, I pack them wherever I go. There's no place I really don't go with them uh, or leave them at home for. I take them everywhere I go. So they don't leave my side, and they are always with me. Um, I carry things in my this little uh, f-stop uh, bag here, which I'll talk about in a second where all this goes. But in here I have uh, batteries and little uh, tools and a, and a blower and a cleaner and a few things like that. It's nice to keep them together because it just makes your life easier. And then I also take a microphone with for some recording. I take these mics with for recording as well and then a cleaning kit. And that is pretty much my setup. Now. Where does it all go? Where do I put it in? Where do you put it in? And this is the question I get so often. I have another video where I talk about my preferred camera bag and it's the exact same bag I take with on this trip. Um, you know, do you have a strap bag? Do you have a wheelie bag? That's up to you. I um, still carry a bag over my shoulders and it takes everything I need. And that is the bag Relay's about to give me, um, which is my F-stop Tilopa bag. Relay? Wait, Jack, I'll take this one now. And this bag, honestly, is everything for me. It's waterproof, it's windproof, works in the snow, rain, dirt, all sorts of conditions. And I take this with wherever I go. And it works the same for my Himalaya trip. There's a lot that goes in this bag, as I'll show you towards the end of the video, just how I pack and how I fit it all into the bag. Now, it doesn't actually go into this bag. This bag is empty. Where it goes is the inner compartment unit, or ICU, and this is this one here. Thank you, Jack. Um, it all goes in here. All of my gear, apart from the scope itself, will fit into this bag, which goes into my outer shell. And I love that about F-Stop because if you have a smaller one for camping or backpacking, you can put a smaller camera bag and leave space for clothes. And it's just pretty cool how they've done that. So for me, all my gear will go in here and it's protected, it's well looked after, and I can take it through rugged destinations and make the bag work. Let me show you how I get all of this stuff packed into a bag.
And that is it. That's how I pack for photography in the Himalayas, especially with a focus on snow leopards. I hope that helped you. I hope it makes your life a little bit easier. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. And also remember to watch part one if you want to prepare in terms of clothing. That's how I found that it works. And uh, like I said in part one, I'm no expert in cold weather gear, but hopefully I was able to shed some light on the topic for you. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, please share with your friends and come back and watch it again before your next epic trip. Jack, come say goodbye. Say bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye bye.